one of the true pleasures of this job is drinking just amazing gins and just spirits that generally I live in a glut of excellent and delicious um, spirits at the moment. As you can see by my many, many reviews, I'm having a blast. And one of the gins I've really liked lately is uh, the Blushing Pink Gin from HM Gin from the Melbourne suburb of Plenty. So without further ado, let's get into the review and see just how good this stuff is and why you should drink a lot of it. So I'm going to uh, continue my tradition of um, taking this baby out of the bottle. About the only thing I've done this to date is actually remove the um, some of the packaging. So we'll do the sound of happiness. There we are, sound of happiness. Now I'm going to be civilized. I'm going to um, put this into a small glass that I prepared earlier. And we will try the smell of happiness. Now the smell of happiness is that it's got strawberries and raspberries. It should be not overly floral. Um, with the fruitish coming to the fore. Mind you, I've had that sort of day. I'm not lucky getting this completely bass backwards. But if I am, I'll be putting that in the um, subtitles. The smell of happiness is, yeah. We've got a dry gin on our hands, folks. Um, and we all know how I hate to dry gin. Now, let's try this taste of happiness with it neat at room temperature. And room temperature as I speak is, what's well, about 10 or 12 degrees. So it's relatively warm for a very, very late autumn um, evening. Oh yeah. The taste of happiness is, one, let's prove which is always a good thing in my house. Um, and once I must put the, yeah, 43%. It's, as the, what I remember the write-up when I looked at it about 10 minutes ago, um, it's not overly floral. I mean, I can taste strawberries. Absolutely, I can taste strawberries. Um, there's even coconut sugar in this. Um, that would be a first, uh, given how many coconuts don't grow in Victoria. For my palate, no one fruit is dominating this. As you can see, it's a nice little mild blush. It's about as pale a pink as you can get and, and not be a clear liquid. So. Hmm. Oh yeah, that is extremely drinkable. Now, they say try it with grapefruit juice and stuff like that, or you can try it simply on the rocks. Because I'm a man who's loath to waste good spirits and I already have an ice cube prepared. I live in the 21st century. You actually do have a freezer in my house. Let's see how this baby goes on the rocks. Now the um, the nose hasn't changed, and on my experience, doing well over a hundred plus reviews now, that basically gin's chemistry. It's one reason why I love it as a spirit so much is that my wife may teach chemistry, but I get to practice it, and above all, I get to play with it. And I've found that over the years, and over the last hundred plus gins and whiskies and vodkas I've um, reviewed, that different tonics and different temperatures will bring out different qualities in a spirit such as gin and let's face it with gin the moment you add juniper to vodka you've got gin and after that it's just came on which is the reason why i personally hate doing all these reviews because it's such an intensely creative spirit to be working with um it's just I mean, at this point in my life yeah the wonder i'm i'm you know, doing mostly gins it's just amazingly creative. 
So let's try the taste of happiness with it chilled. Chilling it brings out the coconut. It's a coconut with a dry gin. So the juniper's there, the coriander is there, but above all, I most certainly do taste the coconut. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit more to this ice cube to see if I can find these um, strawberries and raspberries in the bottom of this glass. Um, the price is gonna be appearing about now, right? Um, it's not hideously expensive. And these guys are from the Melbourne suburb of Plenty, which is basically, I'm down in the southeast. You go through Box Hill, you go through Doncaster, you go through Eltham and Research, and Plenty's kind of like up in that neck of the woods between Epping and Hurstbridge. Basically, I think if you were to throw a dart in the middle of that little green gap between Hurstbridge and Epping, you'd more likely hit Plenty dead centre. Um, so, hmm. Sorry, I'm not picking up the raspberries and strawberries. I am picking up the coconut and I like it. Um, the comparable gin would be Puss and Muse Honey Coconut Gin. But with that, the honey and the coconut are far more pronounced than this is. So it's a very workable tri gin from the father daughter um, team of, at Hill Martin. I think the father's name is Gary. Figure, sorry, Gary, if I've gotten it wrong, if I'm completely getting it bass backwards. Um, having said that, even if I'm getting your names wrong, there's nothing wrong with, you, with, your, um, with your product. Um, and I've got a funny feeling I've got two or three, yeah, I can see at least one other, I got this as a sample pack, so they're 200 mil bottles. So there are going to be two other of these uh, guys' product to review. So yeah, this is perfectly delightful, the drinking. Um, if you're lucky like to live off in Australia, they'll mail it to you. Um, if not, go and pest your local server. And a bit of a teaser, I'm jumping into winter with um, Noble Bootleggers. Christmas pudding gin and you can see I've um, engaged a bit of product sampling on this one and yeah this is going to be a, a gin that I'm going to absolutely hate having to review on camera so chin chin um, to Hill Martin gin so HM gin you with your blushing strawberry blushing strawberry uh, blushing pink um, that's made me blush what it's made me is um, wish I'd Bought a bigger bottle. Yeah, occasionally I'm an idiot. Well, according to some people, I'm an idiot all the time, but this time around I should have really lashed out and just gotten that big bottle. So, thanks for watching. Subscribe, follow, do all the usuals, and I'll catch you around.